you know, the, the idea was, could I still walk across England from Lancashire to, to central London just following the, the field paths? I booked two weeks off work, so I only had two weeks to do it. <laughs> but it was about 280 miles, so I was walking on average 20 miles a day over, over 14 days with my, with my one-man tent. I was trying to uh, raise awareness of austerity cuts to public rights of way budgets. There was a lot of um, rights of way, uh, highway authorities were losing their rights of way budgets and rights of way staff and a lot of councils were axing actually rights of way staff. At the same time there was still massive investment in roads so roads was getting all the money and there was no money for for public rights of way and they were deemed as a low priority so the plan was to just raise awareness of it and to take an actual petition to Houses of Parliament which said let's have some proper investment in walking. So this was what I took, I said uh, a parliamentary petition seeking investment in walking to the House of Commons, the petition of Mr Nicholas Burton of Clitheroe, Lancashire. My plan was just to walk along uh, rights of way all the way to London, so footpaths, bridleways, byways, uh, unclassified uh, lanes, nothing, no A, B or C roads if I could help it. Hope to show that you could still walk across England along the old routes. I mean, I, I found that with a lot of the rights of way, um, the, 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 the sort of styles and the bridges, the way markers and the signposts were, were all in place, you know, or they'd been put there over the years. Um, but often it was a case of overgrown paths, basically, they haven't been maintained. So that they all have that air of neglect. All, all the way through the country there was a bit of an air of neglect. And um, when I got down to south of Ashbourne, in sort of south Derbyshire, um, suddenly the, the landscape changes from the sort of pastor, pastoral countryside and cattle and, sh and sheep to crops. I, I immediately hit obstructions with crops. And a lot of the paths were just obstructed by crops for, for, for several days, really. Uh, farmers have, have the responsibility to remove obstructions on paths and to keep the, keep the paths clear. I, I did come across some very nicely um, looked after paths through crops where they've got a nice line for you to follow. But the majority of paths, were, which were off the beaten track, um, there was a lot of problems just with over, ob crop obstructions. So I went through Derbyshire bit of Staffordshire, Warwickshire, uh, Buckinghamshire and then Northamptonshire and I got the feeling it was a bit of a, of a, a sort of desert really, you know, it's just crops after crops. Uh, didn't see an awful lot of wildlife and I just got the impression it was, um, there weren't any, there weren't any farmers, they were big, you know, they're like big, big concerns, the, the, the farms, you don't, you didn't see any local people farming, um, you didn't see anybody and there wasn't any shops so I'd say oh I'll go and get some breakfast in this next village and I'd get there and there'd be no facilities so um, you know it, that wouldn't have happened say perhaps 50 years ago. Totally different when you get to Chilterns, so the Chilterns uh, northwest of London going along the north of London, um, they were all geared up for walkers, that, that area is, is Lots and lots of rights of way, good for cycling, bridleways, footpath, good, good network. So the idea was to join the Thames Path, which is the national trail uh, right of way along the river, uh, sort of green route into, into London. And I was going far along the Thames Path until you come to the, the Windsor Castle estate, the Windsor Park estate owned by the Crown Estate. And um, so this a traditional towpath route along the river is blocked by... Uh, big iron gates, padlocked iron gates, security cameras. There's also menacing signs saying you will be prosecuted if you trespass on this land. And, there's a, and you look through the gates and you can see this lovely riverside towpath along the Thames, tree-lined, and uh, you think, oh, that'd be, you know, make a lovely walk, that. And only on the edge of her estate. It's a long way from Windsor Castle as well, the actual castle. And uh, so what they do is they force you to go... Um, Across the, across the Thames over a road bridge, follow a B road through sort of Datchet on the other side, which is quite a congested 
little road. So I did I did get there in the end. Well, I actually went to the Ramblers HQ because the Ramblers are on the embankment on the south south side. So the Ramblers thankfully had arranged with me to meet my MP. I did I did go in and, and give give him the petition. Um, and as I say, nothing really came of it. It wasn't it wasn't debated in the House of Commons, and uh, I got a nice cut and paste reply from my my MP saying how how this government was doing great things on walking. But but it was a great experience, and it just shows you you can still walk across um, England uh, following the old public rights of way. Some of which are very very old, very very historic. And part of our heritage and the, the history that I found along the way it was worth doing doing just for that really. Uh, so I could recommend it to anybody is take two weeks out of your out of your life, get a map, get a get a sleeping bag and just get up and get and set off and go and you will soon find, especially if you follow the, the, the field paths and not following any roads, um, you, you'll soon find that you can sort of get lost. Lost in England, if you like. It almost gives you a different perspective on, on your life.